Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, know me, I am Iva Perkovic uh, from uh, NEPTS team and I'd like to welcome you all to our uh, final panel of uh, our first day of the conference. Uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, this uh, session will also be uh, recorded, so if you don't want to be on the recording, I kindly uh, ask you to turn off your camera. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, you can write them uh, in a chat and uh, we will address it uh, later. So I will be uh, uh, your moderator uh, for today and uh, today we will discuss uh, the inequality and inclusion uh, based on the experience from the projects we here at TNEPS are participating either as uh, partners or uh, leaders, but uh, that all have in common addressing this issue of inequality and a strong focus on inclusion and participation. Uh, we have also different uh, dimensions in this project, as you will see, uh, but uh, as I said, strong emphasis on the inclusion, participation and uh, uh, inequality. So uh, let me introduce to you uh, our speakers uh, and panelists for today. Uh, we have here uh, Sanja Brajkovic from the Open Academy, uh, step by step from Croatia. Welcome, Sanja. Uh, Sanya will uh, represent uh, HEAD project, uh, HEAD uh, Empowering School Principles for Inclusive School Culture, uh, that's the full name of the project, and uh, HEAD project is actually led by NEPTS, uh, and it is focused on, the inclusive, on inclusive education through the professional development of the school principles. It uh, takes uh, and exploits best practices from uh, Slovenia and uh, the Netherlands and uh, pilots them in 60 schools in uh, Croatia and North Macedonia. Uh, we also have here uh, uh, Vishna Pavlovich from the Forum for Freedom uh, in Education from Croatia. Welcome, Vishna. Uh, Vishnu will uh, represent the Start the Change project uh, that is uh, led by Forum for Freedom uh, in uh, Education and it is focused on creating the uh, generation of uh, uh, change makers uh, through intercultural education and volunteering with the ultimate goal of preventing and combating uh, radicalization ext and extremism among young people. Um, Finally, we also have today uh, Petrit Tahiri from the Kosovo Education uh, Center. Uh, welcome, Petrit. Uh, Petrit will uh, share with us uh, his experience as a leader of the uh, RIS Action for Reducing Inequalities in Education project. Uh, that's uh, the project is focused on supporting schools, grassroots organizations, uh, community, and policymakers in developing actions. Uh, and uh, policies uh, aim at uh, mitigating the effects of uh, low socioeconomic status uh, on the students' achievement, but also uh, in, in the final goal of reducing the inequalities in education. Uh, thank you everyone for accepting the uh, invitation and welcome once again. Uh, I uh, hope we will have a fruitful <laughs> and inspiring discussion. Uh, and uh, I think we can uh, begin with the first question that uh, is perhaps a bit complex, uh, but I think it is uh, necessary for uh, setting the stage and uh, providing us with the better overview of the uh, situation in, in our education uh, systems. So I will start with you, Petrit. Uh, as in the RIs, one of the main uh, initial outputs uh, was the comparative report that uh, underlined uh, the inclusion and equity issues in the participating countries uh, and demonstrated what countries can do to support uh, not only low SES but uh, all students. Uh, could you possibly uh, summarize for us what were the main challenges that were uh, recognized? Uh, regarding the inclusion and uh, participation on this uh, system level.
Okay, thank you, Eva, for a nice presentation of all of us. And uh, dear all, it's nice to uh, have this opportunity to discuss with you uh, about our uh, joint ongoing project. Uh, as you uh, understood, the name of the project is Arise, Action for Reducing Inequalities in Education. Uh, this project is uh, implemented by uh, a consortium of eight organizations from that are part of NEPS. And we are absolutely uh, uh, happy that on behalf of NEPS, we are tackling such an important issues such as uh, this inequality in education. Uh, maybe it will be good uh, for all of you just to say some words about the project because now we are somehow in the middle of uh, the implementation of the project and it's uh, uh, good to uh, give some key information about the project. So, uh, Action for Reducing Inequalities in Education is a project that uh, is a kind of uh, non-formal network of eight organizations from NEPTS and the main uh, objective is to strengthen the capacities of uh, civil society organization for policy development and advocacy in the area of educational equity through regional cooperation and building national coalitions. Uh, the project have initiated by NEPTS and on the way we have jointly developed this idea and now we as Kosovo Education Center are leading the consortium but uh, every activity is uh, well uh, divided or uh, uh, disseminated in all six countries of uh, Western Balkan countries plus uh, Turkey, who is our uh, uh, partner as well. Uh, one of the key challenge in the beginning of this project is that we have kick off the project on 9th of March 2020, just a week before the lockdown. So imagine a regional project that uh, main activities were focused on uh, regional cooperation, regional meetings, regional trainings and activities to be started in COVID time when we were uh, locked in, in our homes and working uh, in, in distance. Uh, but uh, with the our commitments and with a very good understanding from all our partners, we achieved to uh, convert and adapt all activities on online mode. And uh, since 9th of April, we have started uh, implementation of activities. All activities are uh, in uh, or packed in four working packages. And uh, the first working package is uh, policy analysis and research. The second one is uh, uh, the policy outreach and advocacy. The third one is consortium learning. And the fourth one is school intervention. Why I'm uh, sharing with you this information because we uh, want to uh, to share with you also the levels of uh, working and the levels levels of intervention. The first one, working package one, was uh, planned and already done in the first year of the project during 2020. Planned to have uh, six or to develop six national reports on. Uh, equality uh, uh, and inequality in education with a special focus on low SES children. Then uh, all these six reports, uh, just for your information, uh, reports are from Kosovo, Serbia, Albania, uh, uh, 
Macedonia, Bosnia and Turkey. This six reports then uh, brought together in one comparative report and today I will share some of the key findings of this comparative uh, report. Uh, the second objective or second working package component is policy outreach and we are happy that NEPTS is leading this uh, component because of uh, their experience and also because we are uh, thinking or we that through this component we will achieve to address all issues identified through the working package one through national reports through research we can address structurally to the policy makers through establishing national coalitions and regional policy lab the third component is uh, a development of the uh, members of the consortium so all eight organizations from NEPTS plus we have six grassroots organizations that are part of the project now from each country uh, one grassroots organization so we have two levels of uh, the consortium learning one is uh, learning between us as NEPTS uh, members and the other is with uh, six grassroots organizations that we are working jointly on addressing uh, issues that were identified as part of working package one and the fourth component now if you, you can just visualize this in your head from uh, research findings working on policy making uh, and poli with policy makers and the fourth component is going directly to schools and try to work uh, concretely and implement concretely something in schools within this component we have selected 25 schools among uh, five countries in the region uh, and on each selected school from now on till end of 2023 we will support schools to first adopt their school action uh, SDP school development plan to align with uh, specifics on addressing issues uh, raised by the reports and with a specific focus on addressing issues on inequalities in education. So this is how the project is uh, uh, planned. And uh, now, as I said before, we are on the second year of the implementation and we are uh, considering the circumstances and the situation with COVID. Uh, I can say that we are very happy uh, on the progress that we achieved until, until now. Now, uh, uh, this was as an introduction about the project. Just let me shortly to uh, mention some of the key uh, findings that we uh, identified uh, with the national reports and with the uh, comparative report. So, the first thing is that all countries or as a conclusion of, of, of the, the reports, all countries have made progress towards the establishment of inclusive education. Uh, also, they put it high on the policy agenda. But despite the strong commitment to the idea of inclusive education, financial funds are not sufficient. Education staff is not always fully trained and communication between different stakeholders needs to be improved in and some forms of separate provisions are still present in countries for example based on disabilities or on language spoken and and so on uh, another important uh, recommendation or a finding from the report is that uh, we have uh, quite good <laughs> legislation 
on on national levels but also uh, within these uh, uh, different laws and policies uh, there are differences in how they conceptualize the uh, equality and equity for instance some conceptualize it as equal rights whereas others as the absence of discrimination discrimination against specific groups is prohibited in all countries and they all have a, a definition of inclusion uh, that embraces multiple social groups but some lists are more comprehensive than others uh, then another conclusion from the reports are that uh, this good legislative framework that exists uh, in all countries uh, remain disconnected from the realities in everyday school practice and uh, i wanted to say earlier when lana presented uh, we we can we have or our key recommendation will be we have to develop policies how to implement policies so so we have to uh it's kind of developing uh, guidelines how to implement guidelines so uh, th 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 this is this is the situation that we are on uh, all countries has absolutely very good uh, legislative framework but it is a, a big discrepancy what is written in these uh, laws, policies, and what is the reality in, uh, in school. Uh, also, uh, Lana mentioned many times on, on her introduction the importance of uh, inclusive curriculum or the curriculum itself. And uh, we have to have in inclusive curriculum is equally important as inclusive policies and infrastructure. So we have to have uh, a more inclusive curriculum in our schools. Another key finding is that uh, there is a mismatch or a, a lack of uh, intersectional co collaboration uh, in, in all levels. Uh, this lack of collaboration is within uh, national institutions, for example, ministries, but also between the uh, national and local uh, governments. Uh, there are some other, other uh, findings, but I think that uh, these that I, I wanted to share with you until now are the, the key ones that we have to uh, be focused in uh, next uh, uh, work within the ARISE project. Last thing that I want to, to mention, uh, because the time is going, is flying, is uh, the importance of uh, working directly in schools, working on changing the climate in our schools. So inequalities, uh, can be addressed not only through uh, good uh, government policies and through different affirmative measures on uh, poverty and so on, but it is the most important thing from my point of view is how we can uh, establish or create an, a climate, an environment in our schools that uh, creates uh, the, the equal possibilities for all children in a school. And for this, we have to have a trained teacher, well-prepared teacher, and also move our head from this uh, paradigm of treating equally all. Uh, we have to treat all based on their needs, not to treat them all equally. 
so yeah this is it from my side now and i hope that uh, there will be some comments and questions then i'm ready to uh, answer or respond on this thank you eva and thank you all for listening to me thank you for your attention um, thank you Petrit, for this uh, comprehensive overview uh, we have heard that uh, actually we have big problem as it looks like uh, that uh, we have a good uh, legislation uh, background but uh, uh, in practice uh, the things aren't functioning uh, uh, as they should and uh, regarding this uh, gap uh, uh, that happens, uh, let's now move uh, uh, just to this practic, uh, practice level. Uh, so uh, I would uh, ask you, Sanya, uh, as part of the head project, you, uh, it, uh, the analysis actually was conducted on the school principal needs. So could you uh, perhaps share with us uh, what were the main challenges uh, for the inclusive school uh, culture from their perspective. So we have heard now uh, 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 a great overview of the situation uh, on this systematic and uh, legislative level. And uh, can you tell us something uh, about how it looks in the practice? Yes. So within the project, um, two actually, let's say, studies were done. One is about uh, the, um, the leaders' needs, and another one is about the inclusive climate in, in their uh, their school. So it, it was about the rate of inclusive, let's say, uh, climate in their schools. Maybe we should also mention why we, we are working with leaders, since we know that actually they are not tackling so much practice or uh, we know from many studies that actually they do not, uh, how to say, direct uh, influence on, for example, uh, children challenges, children learning, and so on. But what actually they can do as a leaders and as uh, principals, they can change the climate in the school. They can um, influence on the development of the inclusive climate in the schools. And inclusive climate in the schools actually can change the, um, uh, the, the outcomes of the children, not just the cognitive outcomes, but also so social and emo emotional outcomes. And that was the reason why we chose together with NEPS, of course, is to actually to, to work on, on uh, this topic and to help actually uh, leaders, school leaders, to develop inclusive climate in their schools. Regarding their needs, we can say overall, overall like conclusion was that they need uh, how to say more focused professional development events and uh, professional development, uh, how to say training seminars and so on, when they can build their skills and their uh, competencies together with other um, other principles. Since we know, for example, in Croatia, when they, uh, they participate on those kind of trainings, they mostly get some knowledge about management of the schools. And management of the schools do not directly uh, connect it with the uh, building inclusive uh, climate of the school. What we also did uh, at the beginning of the project or the implementation part of the project is that one study was conducted in all schools which are uh, and with all principals their pupils and teachers in that schools who are uh, participating in the project but also we have control group and at the end of the project we'll be, we we are repeating the same study the same research and we will see actually how we impact on uh, what is the impact on their schools so what are the results of this first study, baseline, let's say baseline study. The, the question here uh, has four parts. Uh, and first part is democratic school leadership. We, we tried to identify is there some kind of democratic school leadership, how it is the perception of the school leaders and also teachers. Then the second one was the cooperation with the stakeholders. The third one was the presence of inclusive school policies and how they are implemented. And the th uh, fourth part was awareness of challenges uh, which they are facing in, in their schools. 
So regarding the first area, which was um, about democratic school leadership, what was the, the overall conclusion that, that everybody like and principals and teachers are aware of the importance of democratic uh, kind of leadership in their schools. And uh, they said, okay, we, we know that, that it is important. And also when you are comparing with the other areas, we can say overall that it, it is the uh, area which is rated the most, most highly, let's say. But what is in when when you are looking on the items, let's say, and this is my impression or my reflection, is what they appreciate are rules, boundaries, you know, uh, to have like uh, clear examples what do you should do and so on. And you will see when we connect this part with the fourth and uh, third part of this questionnaire, which is uh, talking about. Um, recognition of those who are part of the minorities and they are not recognized and actually those who are how to say uh, put, put it on the aside in their schools so pupils who are put it at the aside of their schools then we can actually think about is that democratic part of the leaders democratic way of, of uh, school leadership or maybe it is something else it seems that maybe we have just you know, boundaries and rules, but without vision, how we will actually uh, make uh, our schools more inclusive. Regarding the area of cooperation with stakeholders, it was the same as Patrick just mentioned. Uh, teachers even said that, uh, um, that they are not motivated by the, their principals and school uh, leaders. To, uh, to cooperate with the, with the parents. We also have to have in mind that uh, the study was done at the beginning of the, uh, at the, beginning of the COVID crisis, but uh, also their perception was that they almost at all very, so the cooperation with other stakeholders are very low, especially for teachers. Uh, principals also during the training recognize that they are not, they do not cooperate with institutions in the local community. So there are, the, and also that there is no uh, intersectorial cooperation, as Pat, Patrick uh, mentioned, on the horizontal level or uh, on the vertical level. Uh, uh, I just mentioned that regarding the inclusive school politics. They, uh, and it was also said during the training because they are reflected a lot, is that they actually recognized that they do not follow uh, which, uh, uh, what the children actually are uh, children in risk, minority children, and what kind of uh, additional, uh, additional help or uh, some kind of other kind of instructions those children in need. Uh, also, what is the perception of teachers? They do, they, so overall, they do not, um, um, so they need lots of more, let's say, help or professional development events, or for example, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, cooperation regarding uh, children who are uh, minority children or children in risk. And at the end, which is connected with the fourth part of this, uh, that questionnaire, is that they, they do not actually, in, in most cases, they uh, do not monitor any data and they do not planning according to the data they actually collect on, on their schools. So we can conclude, yes, we have kind of democratic school leadership, but actually we do not uh, we do not see, we, do not, we are not focused on those uh, who need those kind of uh, democratic leadership. And it seems that it is just the way how we are functioning, but we are not focused on the, uh, why we are doing this. Yeah. 
thank you, thank you, Sanya. Uh, it is interesting how uh, these uh, problems are uh, basically uh, uh, similar uh, both on the system and then transferred on the on the school level. Uh, uh, let's focus now on the students' perspective. Uh, which one of the uh, early inputs uh, or outputs? in the start of change uh, uh, project was the comparative uh, report on the students' voice and needs. Uh, can you present to us shortly uh, what were the main challenges that students uh, from Croatia, Portugal and uh, North Macedonia recognized? Are there any similarities with what we've uh, heard uh, so far? Uh, thank you very much and hello everyone. Uh, in terms of the comparative report, uh, yeah, I would like to maybe firstly share that in, though our focus of the, of the research was to, to, to find out uh, students' perspective on inclusion and participation possibilities in, in, in the schools that we as, as project coordinators and consortium members really faced with the challenge on how, how to um, implement uh, the focus groups with students in order to, to ensure inclusion and participation of, of good representations of students in the time of the COVID and lockdown. So uh, it, it, it really uh, helped us actually, though it's uh, with every crisis, I think it also provides the opportunity to learn something. So it really helped us actually to go uh, as, a, as a consortium uh, uh, deeper in, in what it means, really inclusion and participation and the voice of students and why is it important to think about um, uh, the, the methods and approach and, and, and what is the substantial or significant student's voice um, and also how to ensure good representations of all voices in, in, in let's say, acoustic of, of, of one school or, or the school culture. Uh, uh, or, or in order to ensure democratic culture, let's say, in the school, as, as, as it was already mentioned. Um, and with that in mind, the researchers in three countries, uh, with, of course, some postponement and, and, and uh, going uh, beyond the set deadlines, uh, uh, we managed to implement uh, uh, 30 focus groups in 15 schools. And the pers perspective of students, um, I, I might say it was not surprising for us, probably it's not surprising for you that uh, they mostly, um, in conclusion, students shared uh, challenges and obstacles and uh, actually experience of not being uh, heard, uh, that even if they are uh, being heard, that the, uh, they've been heard by the teachers who also didn't have or felt that they don't have a power to to respond to their needs or to make some changes um it it seems like and th th this was the conclusion of authors that uh within the school that there is already by default uh certain rules uh and and students recognize them that are fixed and not open to to their let's say needs um and perspectives that they would like to change of course, there is another part of students, um, let's say, um, change in attitude, which they explain with the attitude of, of teachers as well, which is not, uh, which is uh, like, uh, they are not able to change anything. In secondary schools, usually the perspective is we are here for four years and we will go on, which corresponds also with some of the perspectives of teachers that we interviewed uh, as, as also one of our activities, which is uh, in, in, in secondary schools, uh, yeah, we have every generation of students who are uh, mentioning the same complaints, but we are limited by the rules that we have, and, and it's really, really hard to change. So um, let's say the key recommendation from the comparative report uh, was, uh, again, uh, something that, uh, that, that was, I think, also recognized by, by previous colleagues, uh, which is how do we work on quality communication? And then even if we have a quality communication, how we can ensure the encouraging space where all stakeholders can have a voice, can have experience of being heard, and can have a space where some of the changes can really take place. 
because the alternative to that, uh, it seems like uh, from, from students and from teachers is status quo and, and no change, no change at all. So within the our project, which is called accidentally, maybe, maybe not start the change, we are actually uh, uh, yeah, trying to explore together with teachers of 15 schools how we can really employ like whole school approach and that there could be a space where uh, voice of both students but also voice of teachers can be something regarded as, as significant and important. That, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't take maybe a longer time, but uh, yeah, that in, in the first year of the project that we really then together with teachers uh, all, all of us partners worked really hard in, in building resources and training curriculum in, in which we revisited what it means to, to have a voice in, in, in school and how that can be related to teaching and to teaching curriculum that then that is related to student backgrounds and, and their um, let's say communities that they come, come from so it's, it's related to their really life. Um, and also maybe just to mention that uh, we have uh, in, in a third year that is um, in front of us a strong, hopefully uh, uh, also significant uh, policy comp component then uh, that we will hopefully uh, uh, yeah, have possibilities to, to, to contribute to, to this uh, change on, on policy. Thank you, Vishnya. Thank you all. I think uh, uh, we, from what uh, I heard, that uh, we now have a uh, not so um, optimistic but a nice overview of the situation where we saw how uh, problems from systemic level transfer and spill over to this uh, practical school level, and uh, which is also reflected as we heard now from Vishnya. Uh, on the students as well, uh, uh, where, where they don't feel like they are heard. Uh, and uh, as you said, Vishna, uh, uh, you, you uh, uh, asked the question, how can we help? How can we uh, empower them? Uh, so uh, I would uh, ask you, uh, perhaps uh, Vishna, you can continue, uh, about how are you uh, improving uh, uh, these things and empowering uh, uh, students and teachers and uh, school staff throughout uh, your projects, uh, throughout all these dimensions. Uh, perhaps you can you can mention some of the concrete uh, uh, examples from uh, from from the project. Uh, yes. Uh, so in the first year, what we what we uh, I think the, all partners focus the most uh, beside the challenges of organizing uh, the, the the teacher training was. Um, creating curriculum and then uh, together with uh, teachers actually exploring what the student voice really means and how to, to include and how to empower students for active participation. And I think that uh, in, in the experience of, of all partners, what was important was um, actually tackling our own perspective as adults. Uh, like, what does it mean to have a voice? for us? Did we always have a voice? When we didn't have a voice, how did it felt? Uh, just just uh, trying to find find out the meaning uh, of, of voice for us as, as an adult. And uh, let's say um, uh, how, how and what uh, context, what, what kind of support helped us to really find our own voice. And I think it really clicked with teachers and just exploring also for them themselves personally and then uh, again going back to students like what is the space in school that we can provide that students can really have a voice and what does it mean uh, do we do we just only like listen to students invite them to say uh, and what what could be the next steps and this also kind of uh, helped teachers to, to identify all space in the school where they can uh, students can be supported to give their perspective and then again to ensure the audience or the space or um, or, or the, 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 the concrete change that they could uh, take on themselves and, and really uh, get some get some uh, 
actual actual change and for students of course to ensure this experience of them yes we can be heard we can do some change and what we say matters even if some problems that they're pointing out cannot be solved but just by being heard being um, um, give, giving given explanation and, and, and really showing understanding and empathy for their problems that it really it really helps in changing this culture so some of the concrete examples, uh, so I will mention those from Croatia, though if we had more time, definitely the, the, there are interesting uh, examples and volunteering activities and initiatives and projects in North Macedonia and Portugal. Uh, one is for, from a primary school uh, where we had a, a teacher uh, who together with a group of students actually, uh, she uh, decided to um, to, to continue to work with, uh, with students from the focus group in, 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 in uh, previously mentioned, mentioned activities. So just to, to have this experience, okay, you shared with uh, researchers your perspective and uh, identified problems and then the teacher from the same school continued to work with the, the, those group of students and trying to tackle different, different issues that mentioned. And what was interesting with that school, uh, with that teacher and with that group, that they actually decided to include those students who were of different uh, grades and ages, uh, is actually to, to uh, give opportunity for those students to change policy documents of the school. So this was really interesting uh, experience, I think, for the school, for those students definitely, and also for us, just giving uh, one, one good practice example. So one of the first documents, and they will continue, that they addressed uh, was uh, student, uh, the, the stu uh, student award of the final year, like who is the best student uh, in, in the end of the primary school, who was usually uh, provoked among students feeling of, in, let's say, injustice. They, don't, they, they sometimes were not so, so happy with it because usually it was the recommendation of one or two teachers for the usually best, academically best, best, best students. So the, the students in this group, they designed the criteria, indicators, and they uh, expanded the criteria from academic to also a student who is active, who is supportive, who is, uh, let's say, um, active in, in uh, different extracurriculum activities, um, and and uh, uh, this really presented uh, they, the group presented this uh, de their document to the all teachers and then to to uh, their own classrooms and adjusted so they, they try to include the, the, the voices of, of all school and now they they are happy with, with this document and now they will start with with uh, other other school documents so this this uh they called they titled themselves reformators i think it's really uh, in the indicative i think particularly for croatia to have this to have this group of students uh another another project if i'm not taking too much time i, I will just go quickly because i think it's important to mention the, the the secondary school uh vocational schools where students were looking for more uh more let's say empathy from teachers to, to, to have a feeling that teachers understand their issues. They symbolically call their project uh, Walk in My Shoes. And uh, so we worked with those uh, school team and uh, they, they were really, let's say, open. And this project gave them the space to organize what they also recognized as necessary. So they organized a um, platform. It was meant to be alive, but it was online where uh, this group of uh, students from focus groups actually identified and shared the different issues and problems in front of the school principals and, and some other key teachers. Uh, and uh, sometimes that they they shared uh, in, in their reports, uh, some problems have been solved and some problems have been discussed and that already mattered, mattered to them. And they could, like students, of course, have capacity to understand also these limitations of the of the, of, the, of the system. So these are just a few few examples on, on 
uh, yeah, with some effort, how the, 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 the school culture, because for, for those two schools, this really meant a change in, in a school, a school culture, uh, uh, not only for students, but for those teachers. Thank you, Vishnya. Uh, those are uh, really uh, great and uh, inspiring, uh, and I think really relevant, uh, relevant examples. And I think they can't uh, be implemented without the support of the school uh, principals. So I would uh, ask Sanya if she could perhaps share with us uh, uh, experiences from the head project and uh, how can we, uh, uh, how are you working with, with the school leaders uh, to uh, make this shift from, from managers bound in, in boundaries and, and the rules to, to pedagogical uh, leaders who are supporting and empowering students? Uh, so maybe the main, I, I'm, I'm not sure if the, it is the main uh, part of the implementation of the, the project is actually developing and implementing the curriculum for professional development of school leaders in order to help them to, to develop uh, inclusive school uh, climate and culture in, in their schools. So uh, what we did together with other partners is that actually we developed first the framework of this curriculum and then um, uh, we discussed and uh, have a conversation with uh, some policy makers. Uh, we have policy coalition and if I should describe what is the process then the process is I think bottom up and also horizontal because we have a lot of conversations with those policy makers in order to see how they perceive the, the same curriculum. Um, before one, one month, we uh, finished the implementation of that uh, curriculum, which was consisted of uh, five modules and 10 days of, of training, which is, I think, a lot. But what, uh, what actually give us this extensive kind of training that actually we, uh, how to say, we build the community of school leaders with, uh, within the project. And right now they have a very strong Viber group and they, uh, I'm part of that Viber group and they are um, continuing to discuss a lot of uh, topics. And even uh, we developed one um, uh, uh, club of uh, book readers now. And at Friday, we have the first meeting of a uh, club of book readers, which is consisted of uh, principals of the schools. But what was the topics of the training? So it was like uh, uh, more about leadership and a different kind of leadership, which are supporting the inclusive climate and culture. Then we have a model about inclusive climate and also culture. Uh, we have a model about uh, social inclusion and social justice, which was very important for them. Also about the monitoring and planning some changes in, in their schools. And they have a lot of sharing and the, each model was consisted uh, uh, with one part which was more how to say cognitive and naming lots of things and lots of concepts because we think that you should understand the concept and the research and then you can of course implement that but there was lots of also sharings and uh, not just sharings but uh, group reflection because our goal was to uh, build actually the, the learning community which is consisted of the of the principles. The feedback is actually great, and uh, now we know, uh, and I I know that it is the same with uh, uh, another uh, partners uh, in this project, especially with the forum, uh, and they say that they have the same same feedback. And now the other principles in Croatia ask us to. Uh, to organize the training so uh, fast for them because they would like to be included as well. Yeah. So that, that, that implementation part. Yeah. Thank you so much. It is uh, so nice to hear that uh, you have managed to to find a dedicated uh, dedicated. Uh, uh, 
participants and uh, create such a strong uh, community. Uh, which leads me to uh, my next question for uh, peasants. Uh, as in the RIS, you have this uh, whole school approach. Uh, you have involved, as you mentioned, the grassroots organizations as well uh, and community. You're working with teachers, school staff. Uh, can you uh, share with us uh, how are you uh, uh, implementing these activities that are uh, uh, addressing uh, inequalities in education and, uh, and are focused on inclusive school? school culture? Uh, since we are in the beginning of working with schools, uh, I cannot uh, give you uh, specific examples how we uh, this will be done, but uh, uh, we are in the process of implementing of uh, grassroots organization projects. And uh, regarding the report that we have received with, uh, from our partners, each of grassroots organization are uh, the, the main focus are having in organizing this information sessions, awareness raising campaigns on uh, specific, uh, specific issues that are a integration of low SES students in school life than uh, uh, inequality in education and, and so on. Uh, for example, in Kosovo, uh, last week, our grassroots organization organized a training for teachers with a focus on the discrimination, stereotypes, prejudice, and so on. So uh, this is a way how we can uh, address this issue and this for sure in long term will uh, have impact on this uh, establishing or creation of, of uh, this environment that uh, uh, Sanya and Vishnya mentioned in, in, in schools. But I think uh, that the main uh, challenge for all of us who are working on this is how we can overcome uh, this uh, uh, discrepancy or, or this uh, uh, gap between the formal doing things formally and doing things concretely in, in, uh, in schools. For example, uh, Vishnya mentioned uh, this uh, establishing of uh, students councils and stud other bodies or uh, mechanisms within schools that uh, are uh, students are important part of, of that uh, body but sometimes this are only on papers if you go and visit schools they have all list of names who are part of this uh, students council or parent council but if you ask them, okay, let me see some of the minutes of the meetings that they had. Ah, immediately you will face a, a, a challenge to find this because it's not that they didn't uh, uh, had meeting uh, or uh, had a meeting, minutes of meeting, but they didn't have meeting at all. So these are some uh, challenges that we have to, to uh, overcome somehow. And I think Arise, uh, uh, approach is that we are trying to uh, build something from the roots. So by uh, having all these things written in SDP, in School Development Plan, and then help schools to develop uh, action plans, and in the same time, support schools to implement that action plans, uh, this means that we will, uh, at least for for the life of the project, uh, we will have something concretely, a concrete results. And our main uh, challenge will be how we can have this uh, impact or this intervention sustain after uh, the project ends. And we think that uh, by having them part of the school uh, framework documents like SDP or uh, uh, annual uh, action plan, it is one way, but we have also 
to make them commit and also to motivate them. But motivation in this, from my point of view, is the results that we will show to them or they will feel at the end of our testing uh, uh, period. I hope that these plans that we have quite well in our minds will be implemented in this way and will have these results and this will help us then to further develop and and share and disseminate with other schools because as I told you we have only 25 schools in the region but hopefully the results will be shared in other uh, schools as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Petrit. Uh, I know uh, we are uh, short on time, but I would just like to um, come back uh, to, the, to the initial question and this uh, actually question of the policies. Uh, as we heard, uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, legislation, some policies, both on system level, both on uh, school level, but uh, it it looks like uh, something is missing, and all of uh, all of uh, these projects have strong uh, policy component. So I would like to uh, uh, a bit uh, get your perspective and uh, opinion. Uh, how are you involving uh, the policy makers? Uh, can we make uh, uh, any change uh, that is, uh, as Patrick said, concrete uh, without them? Uh, and uh, how can we actually make them commit uh, uh, to what they uh, uh, promise? Uh, so I don't know if uh, someone would like to volunteer to go first. Uh, uh, I, okay, I, will, I, will, I will begin shortly. Uh, so, uh, Yes, uh, as I said before, maybe uh, one of the <laughs> our ways is let's develop some uh, guidance or policies, how to implement policies. But with these documents, uh, as you uh, from NEPS, you know, we are uh, now in the process of developing these roadmaps towards the the uh, policy interventions and what kind of interventions we will do. So in this regard, I think that we have to uh, maybe bring all policies together in one uh, roadmap and then jointly uh, as coalitions that we have part of a RISE project to uh, push, to, advo to advocate and to, to, to make pressure towards policy making to implement those policies that uh, exist. And uh, it's not uh, necessary to do it only in national level. This also has to, to be start from the uh, schools, uh, because also schools are lacking the implementation of, of current uh, uh, legislative framework, because uh, they are uh, not willing to do this and no one is asking for uh, the uh, accountability. So this is one aspect that we have to pay attention. Transparency, accountability. Until we will have these two components, I hope that these policies that are very well written and structured will be implemented. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I uh, would agree with uh, with you, uh, Sanya. Uh, do you maybe uh, want to share something? Uh, yes, Petri, Petri, thank you for this. And I would I would maybe add one uh, one step more since I'm coming from step by step. <laughs> so and one one step is uh, one between. Uh, it, it seems that. Uh, at least I think in, in, in our situation that we have uh, policies, you know, we have lots of laws and they are not so bad in many times. And uh, as you said, there is no implementation, but I think in the middle of these two parts is actually understanding. So we write it down, we would like to implement, but very, very often we do not know if we understand the same, if we understand what is the purpose of those 
uh, those documents. So what we actually need to do is to open the floor to discuss about what's going on here, what is written here, and what is the purpose of those documents. Because very often those who are working, this is not their guilt, but they are not empowered, you know, to discuss. This is also because we do not have democratic schools and we should empower people to discuss and to say how they are understanding. Very often they see obstacles, but they do not see, see opportunities. And maybe we can also work on uh, with them on just, you know, how, how you read those documents, what is written down, and how you would see the implementation, what is your vision of implementation of these documents. Because if we just, and you mentioned at the, at the beginning, if we just say inclusion, we know that different people actually see different. When they open the, the door of the room, of the classroom, they expect to see different things, and we do not actually build the same vision of the inclusion. Yeah. Maybe just to mention, Eva, what, what we are doing in HEAD, and this is actually the component which is added right now. Um, we realize that it it would be nice to empower principals to do advocacy for those, how to say, changes they think it should be made in order to build inclusive uh, school uh, cultures. And what we are uh, going to prepare for them is one advocacy training. And uh, during that advocacy training, we would like actually to make them more competent and to build their competencies so they will advocate for some changes on the local level and also on the national level. So actually what we did is that we start from the researches and uh, from the concepts. We build the understanding of those concepts. Then they shared each other what they are doing in the schools. They, they have a community of learning. And now they are prepared actually to advocate for, for some of the changes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sana. This is uh, a really uh, great uh, uh, initiative. Uh, I would just uh, uh, like to hear uh, also from uh, Vishnya and uh, her experiences before we wrap up and uh, go to questions and comments. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for um, these uh, good recommendations. Uh, they are uh, noted from both of uh, previous uh, um, uh, contributions in, in my notebook, definitely. Uh, in terms of the, the, the discrepancy that we have in, in terms of the existing uh, uh, policy framework for, for student voice and actual practice in the schools, uh, definitely I think one of the things that we did and that we plan uh, that we plan to continue doing is actually that um, uh, as, as organization in our strategic planning, we put uh, student voice as horizontal topic. So in all our programs, in all our teaching, the, uh, teacher trainings and seminars, uh, we will uh, ensure that this topic uh, is, uh, let's, let's say, integrated into the curriculum of the seminar and um, just as, as, as we all recognize that the framework exists and the discrepancy or the gap actually comes from uh, uh, different uh, limitations and particularly the attitude of, of, of teachers or let's say adults in the, in the, in the school, uh, school life. So uh, we can only on a school level uh, continue to work on this topic in, in our direct work of schools and hoping that the change will, uh, will, will come. Uh, in terms of the of the the, the national uh, policy level, as, as it was already previously mentioned in our um, also final year, we will also, with the help of the NEPTS, um, uh, create national roadmaps. And uh, um, yeah, this this will be a challenge definitely. In in forum, we are constantly discussing uh, how to we we don't have so much of positive experience in how to include and, and to get them on board, let's say, the, 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 those who can really uh, make, make uh, let's say, uh, 
difference to the practice, even from existing, and not to mention integrating some new uh, policy developments. Uh, and, and one of the things that I think in forum we will try to do on, on, on the national level, let's say, to include other stakeholders beside us so, so that we have a stronger voice, let's say, in front of the, the, the official policy decision makers, which means they will include uh, UNICEF, they will include uh, Obdusman for Children, uh, youth, uh, National Youth Net, uh, Creation Net, uh, Network, so, so just other institutions and NGOs who maybe together we will have, uh, let's, let's say, because we have the same actually agenda in terms of the, the if, if you look uh, on, on the student voice from children, children rights, and in that sense, uh, we, we, we hope, yeah, with the, with the help that uh, of, of these national roadmaps and exact uh, steps and interventions that uh, we will, uh, yeah, make it. Thank you, Vishnya. Thank you uh, all for uh, sharing uh, your experiences, uh, thoughts, and uh, really some uh, great inspiring uh, actions and uh, initiatives. Uh, for me, it's always nice to hear when the project grows out of uh, its limits and uh, somehow finds its way to, to build actually a community like, uh, like some of you uh, uh, mentioned. And I would like uh, to open the floor now for our audience uh, uh, for questions and uh, comments. I uh, saw in the chat that Ulvia would like to share something. So go, go ahead. Ulvia. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, downloaded both the reports and I will review them. Thank you very much. And I think I will be using this in the reading materials for my inclusive education course. I think it's very important to have this kind of perspective. Uh, but reflecting to what you said, I have no doubt that it's very important work. And uh, But I just have some comment, maybe strange comment. Um, you know, the overall approach all this to inclusive education culture development, um, it usually was coming from bottom to up. Uh, and it was following this uh, uh, dichotomy of democracy, those who are ruling and those who are ruled by. And so those who are ruling, they should meet the needs of those who are ruled by. Uh, but uh, I don't know about your country context, uh, but when I see in the my country context and country context in the region, uh, you know, I think that policymakers are also vulnerable. They are vulnerable because they are not provided with this uh, many opportunities to learn, to develop, to know, uh, to participate in these change initiatives. We usually, I, I remember from my experience, uh, we usually were inviting them uh, to listen. Uh, and I'm just thinking that maybe for so long time, because for instance, inclusive education reform in Azerbaijan, 20 years, and is the same. Uh, I think that maybe, uh, maybe sometimes it's reasonable to change the approach and to target those poor policy policymakers who have to meet the needs, but they don't know how and why. That was just strange comment. Thank you so much. But thank you for the materials you developed. Yes, please. Mm, thank you, thank you, Ulvia. It's a really interesting comment and a food, a food for thought. Lana would like to uh, uh, share something. I can't resist this invitation about poor policy makers. I'm sorry, Ulvia. <laughs> because we have all these poor people in our systems. We have the poor teachers, the poor school leaders, the poor policy makers. Um, um, and, and in the end, the poorest of, of them all are the students. Um, so I would always focus uh, our, our, our thoughts towards them. But I do agree with Ulvia that policymakers are not empowered. And we constantly come across this where they feel they then don't have power. They are bureaucrats or not bureaucrats. Um, and, and this is a problem. So, so I, I am all for dialogue. Uh, um, and we need to really, really find ways in which we can bring what we are trying to do much closer uh, to what they can do. And one of them is, as Sanya said, I think this understanding. I think they also don't really understand 
how or what um, they're supposed to do. So yeah, <laughs> poor students, number one, uh, but yes, let's empower everybody. Thank you, Alana. Uh, do we have uh, any more uh, comments or questions for our speakers? <laughs> okay. Uh, if not, uh, I would like to thank you uh, all. Thank you uh, to our panelists for uh, accepting the invitation and sharing all this uh, significant and inspiring work with us. I'm sure uh, uh, we all uh, have a lot to reflect after this, uh, this uh, well, not so short discussion. Uh, but I would also uh, like to thank you uh, all who participated today uh, and I hope we will see you uh, as well uh, next week on our second day of the uh, conference where we will be uh, presenting and discussing about the education policy networks uh, in the first session and in the second session we will uh, address the role uh, of education in the uh, more than uh, urgent uh, uh, needed uh, green uh, transition. So thank you all uh, once again and hopefully we will see uh, you next week. Bye.